This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Today, we are going to go through the ACA on-demand year-end process. First, before we dive into the 1095s and the 1094 and how to create the e-file, we're going to go through kind of like a little small checklist to make sure all the data is in ACA on demand that will be needed in order to produce accurate 1095s and 1094s. So the first thing you do after you have logged in to ACA on demand is we're going to do some double checks here. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you have employees into the system. So employees, employee setup. Here they all are. Check. Everything is good. We've got employees in. Next, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have our payroll files in. Since the payroll files do dictate hours and um, wage amounts and things like that um, in order for reporting accurately. Excuse me, I forgot my words there. All right, so we go to the payroll file, and it looks like payroll files are in here, but I always like to double check to make sure that the very last payroll file um, for the reporting year is in the system. Now, obviously, at a quick glance, I can easily look here and see that Moira right here is um, being paid in 2021, so I know all my payroll files are up to date, but I still like to do that double check. So one employee that I know for sure that was paid in December of 2020 um, is Kristen Wig here. So I'm just going to come down and make sure that her files are all in. I'm just going to change that viewing. We'll go down to 2020 and see how you can easily scroll. You can sort by employees. You can put in start and end date. Um, you can sort by the period, end date, anything like that. And here is my last payroll file of 2020. So that is perfect. All the payroll files are in and ready to go. I could have also easily exported this to Excel to double check as well. Um, but it's all here and in the system and ready to go. Next thing you want to make sure um, is that you've entered in all the health plans for 2020. So to make sure to do that is you're going to go to plans. And here we go, right here, there are my three plans that I have. I have a gold, silver, and bronze plan in here. Just going to expand one of them by clicking on that pencil mark to make sure that all of that data is in there and correct for my healthcare plan. All right, and that's perfect and ready to go. So now that I have plans, I have payroll, I have healthcare plans in, I'm going to make sure that those offers of coverage have been completed as well. So to double check that, that's under employees and offers of coverage, so we click there. And here we go. I can easily see enrolled, waived, enrolled. You know, all my healthcare plans are there. Once again, another nice thing is you can click on that little Excel icon and export that to an Excel document so you can scan through it there. Depending on how many employees you have, it might be easier to do it that way. If you just have, um, you know, just your ALEs, you know, a little over 50 maybe or anything like that, it might just be easier to check on the screen. So here you just, like I said, wanted to make sure that all the offers of coverage has been completed. The next thing that you kind of want to double check is really more of a business check on your end. So it's one of those, is my business a school or does my business have a large break in service, like 13 weeks where we just completely shut down? Like I say, school is mainly the only one that I can really think of off the top of my head that has that bit of a break, aka summer vacation, where the teachers are still being paid, but they're not technically working, so no payroll files are going into the system. So that could affect their um, ACA calculated status um, because they're missing all those hours during the summer. So I did go ahead and set up my little example company right here to have a break of service. So I just wanted to show you, it'd be under setup, and you'd click on this breaks of service right here just to show you the screen, and you would just simply add your break. You could call this, you know, summer 2020 or summer 2019, whatever it may be, when the break started, when the break ended, and you would just save that and it would be listed there. And then you'd come to employees, breaks in service, and you would just simply assign whatever employees, it could be all of them, it could be a few of them, and then you just select the break over here and hit save. And like I said, this is only if your company has a break in service like a summer vacation, and you just need that to help out with the calculation purposes on the measurement period. Okay, so just something to think about if your business is like that and you need to add in a break of service. Um, next one, is your company a control group? Do you have a parent-child company, a brother-sister company, anything along those lines? Maybe your company is set up in the system as um, multiple um, 
entities. Um, basically, it's the same EIN, but you have it broken out um, possibly as like, you know, CEOs and VPs in, you know, company A, if you will, and then all the employees in company B, if you will, but it's the same EIN. They need to be tied together, obviously, because they are the same company. Um, so you just want to double check that as well. So a quick way to double check that, let me jump over here, switch out my companies. I have a child company and a master company here. All right, so I'm going to jump over to my master company first, and I'm going to go to setup and then company setup, and right here in this little section I can check is this parent company, and it is checked off, so that's good right there, and then I'm gonna pop over to my child company to make sure that it is tied to that master company. So once again, setup, company setup, and right down here I can see parent company is the master company right there, so that is absolutely perfect. Now, if this was a situation where um, it was a company with the same EIN, they would still be tied together in the same method. Just one of them would be, so to say, randomly selected as the master and the other one would be selected as the child company. Um, that it just, you know, how it is if it's the same EIN. So you just want to make sure all companies that need to be tied together are in fact tied together. Okay, so double check that one. Now, the last thing that you want to double check before we dive into the 1095 is if you have your Box 1 W-2 wages in the system. Um, you only need this if you are going to be utilizing the W-2 safe harbor. The Federal Poverty Line safe harbor is already hard-coded into the system, so you don't need to worry about that one. And if you are positive that your health care plan meets the Federal Poverty Line safe harbor, then you don't need to enter in the W-2 wages unless you would like to utilize that as an extra safe harbor for the employees for the codes on the 1095. So how you check to make sure that's in there is under ACA, Affordability Tracking, and then right here under W-2 wages. So you'd simply click on this and we would have W-2 wages here. Hold on, let me switch back companies. I forgot that I was still in my control group. So back into ACA, affordability tracking and W-2. As you can see right here for Penn, I at least got his in there. Nobody else has theirs, so this is a simple little fix. Like you can just click on the edit um, and you would input, it just saved the last number that I had in there, you know, whatever his W-2 box one wages are and you just click update, hit OK, and now it's in there for you. You can also export this into an Excel document. Um, you can complete the box one wages that way and also simply re-import that into the system and then everybody's box one wages would be in there. So that way you don't have to do it one at a time. Okay, so things to all think about and double check before you dive into the ACA reporting. All right, so now you've gone through all of that process. So now let's dive into these 1095 and make sure that everything is looking A-OK. -okay. So how you do this is you go under reports and then you'll see the 1095 and your 1094 and the year-end wizards. We're gonna get to the year-end wizards in just a minute, but first let's do the 1095. So once you click on this, it's gonna pull up, so to say, a mock 1095 for the employees. Here's a great chance to double check the employee's address Double check the company's address as well. Make sure you, if you guys have moved locations or anything like that, um, that will be listed here. So if we need to update that address, we could do so under company setup. Same with your EIN. If maybe a digit was switched or left off or anything like that, we need to make sure to get that updated. All right, so just kind of double check there. And then if you notice down here in the part two, this is the employee's offers and their coverage uh, codes and dollar amounts here. So this is where you really want to double check these codes. The codes and dollar amounts will automatically produce based off of the coding that is in the software. So you shouldn't have to worry about that based off of the information of the payroll files, the hours worked, and the health care plans that were offered to the employees the codes accordingly will generate on the 1095. So it's just a matter of scrolling through and going through the employees and making sure. Now, when I look at Chase here, I notice, oh, he doesn't have anything. But if I look down at this bottom right here, I have a do not produce 1095 and it is checked off. That tells me that this employee is a part-time employee and therefore is not going to get a 1095. So all employees will be listed in here because we just need to make sure that we either are producing the 1095 and the codes are correct or we're not producing the 1095 because maybe they ended up being a calculated part-time employee and therefore are not getting one. 
All right, so you just want to scroll through all of your employees, see all the codes that are automatically gener generating and populating for you. Now, let's say you came to an employee and for some reason you were like, you know what, I did offer them coverage or they should be getting a 1095, whatever is the reason you may have to think that this person's 1095 is incorrect, we do have an edit button right here for you. So you can simply click edit. You can either uncheck that box to make the 1095 produce or check it to do not produce the 1095 like they were not supposed to be getting one. You can also come up here and select what code is needed in line 14 for the offers of coverage. You can come in down here and type in a dollar amount for the healthcare plan, whatever it may be, and then also enter in the code for line 16, which is the safe harbor code. All right, and once you hit update, any updates that you make to this 1095 when you do the edits, those updates will be saved, and that what will show up in the final print file and the file that gets sent off to the IRS. All right, so you can come in here and make all the changes you want. The last change that you make is the one that will be printed and sent. All right, so it will save it. So like I said, you just want to go through all of your employees, double checking the information, making sure everything is looking right, the codes are correct, the dollar amounts are correct. This is just kind of like your little preview before we go ahead and create the files needed. Also, if you have any questions with the 1095, you're unsure, this little green eye right here is gonna take you to the help files and it will explain each line for you as well. Okay, so if you have any questions on what those mean, feel free to peek into the help files for assistance. All right. So once you have finished going through all of the 1095, it's now time to check the 1094. So you go back to report, 1094 preview, and then right here is just the company information. So once again, you're going to double check that company info, make sure the person um, to contact is correct with the same correct phone number, anything like that, the number of 1095 submitted, if it was a control group, things along these lines, all things to check off for the month, full-time employees, total number of employees, et cetera. If your company is a control group or has the same EIN, well, if it has the same EIN, it won't be listed here. But if it's a control group, the other companies will be listed out. And I'm going to show you that real quick. I'm going to pop up to my master company again real fast just to show you guys what it will look like because it will automatically generate and produce this information so long as they are tied together. And you can see right here, there's my child company and their EIN tied right there together. All right. So that's how you can just do a little double check on that one as well. All right. So now that you've gone through the 1095s and you love them, you've gone through the 1094 and you love it, it's time to hit those year-end wizards. So the first one that we're going to come to is our year-end for the 1095 wizard. All right. So we get to the 1095. And it's just, once again, it's a little checklist, kind of like what we did at the very beginning um, of this little recording to make sure that we have done everything. Your measurement period is set up, perfect. Uh, employees information is all accurate, done. Payroll data is uploaded, yep. Healthcare plans are in there, correct. Um, offers of coverage have been in there, correct. So once you can check off all of those, then you're gonna hit the next. You're gonna double check the company setup information. I love the address and the contact, so I'm just going to mark off the little checkbox here that it is correct. Move on to the next one. Uh, company setup. I confirm that these companies are not part of a control group. Yep, because nothing is listed here. This is not a control group. Whereas if I went to my master company, it would be listed out there that I have a child company. Next one is I go that I have made sure. I have made all attempts that everything is correct. Yes, I have. So check that off and hit finish. There we go, 1095 confirmation process is done. Now, when you come over into reports and 1095s, you're gonna see down here a print button for the 1095. That button was not there before when we were going through everything because it was just our double check. So here, if I go ahead and click on the print, you hit okay, and what's gonna happen is that it's gonna open it up as a PDF file right here for my so here we go. Here's my 1095s, and that's the information that I generated, and it's all right here for me. So I'm definitely going to download this um, and save it as a, uh, and just save it as an electronic file for me. So I have it, and we're good to go. All right. And then you're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to hit the year end 1094 wizard, and it's just a simple process. Once again, really want to make sure that company setup information is correct. It is, so I check that off to verify it. I hit next, made sure that it's all correct, hit finish, 
1094 is done, I can go into report to my 1094. And then when I scroll down, there's my 1094 print button. And it's going to pop it up as a PDF file for me to save and print off if I want. Now, here's the thing. is You can print the 1094 if you want to or just save it electronically. It's totally up to you if you want um, to have the paper copy. Now, before we go on to the e-file wizard, why well, I just want to talk about this real quick. You can do the 1095 wizard and the 1094 wizard as many times as you would like. You can come into these 1095s, even though I have already clicked the print button, I can still click edit and make changes. Go back through that 1095 wizard again and hit that print button and it'll give me updated 1095. So if after you go through that process, you realize, oh man, that person's 1095 was incorrect, you can still have a chance to come in here and make this change. All right, so you can make changes, do the 1095 and the 1094 wizard as many times as you want. Okay, now the second that you go through that e-file wizard though, that's going to generate the file electronically that gets sent to the IRS. Now this is not a file that you have to worry about sending off. Our software will send it off to the IRS for you. All right, so once you give us the okay on that one, the software is gonna go ahead and produce that file and get that sent over to the IRS for you, okay? So that's what I say is do this, 1095s and the 1094s as many times as you want. Make sure you absolutely love them before they get sent off to the IRS. Because once they get sent off to the IRS, everything gets locked down. It's done until the correction process opens up. And generally that happens, oh, about two to three months after um, the 1095 and 1094 deadline for the IRS, okay? So just make sure you absolutely love your 1095s and 1094s before you do the e-file wizard, okay? Um, now, just a couple notes before I hit that e-file wizard, because I do want you guys to see what the screens look like uh, before you know you dive into it as well. So to touch on control groups again, so if you're not a control group, you can just ignore my yammering right now. Um, but if you are a control group, I just want to let you know that each EIN, so if each company in the control group has a different EIN, each EIN has to do their own set of wizards, each one. Okay, it's not one of those signed, sealed, delivered, you know, kit and caboodle all in one, and it's done because it's a control group. They are technically their own little business because they each have their own EIN. So make sure you do each wizard for each EIN of the control group, okay? And as we looked at the 1094, we noticed all the companies that are tied together in the control group are listed together. So you don't have to worry about the IRS not knowing that they are a control group. They will be tied together in that instance. Now, if the company has the same EIN, but it was that company A, company B type of setup that I mentioned earlier, each company, so to say, each time it's listed out, would have to do their own 1095, but only one needs to do the 1094. So pick one to do the 1094 wizard. Um, and then when you do the e-file wizard, um, it will all pull through as well, okay? So make sure you have those uh, kind of in your head as well. All right, so let's take a look at this e-file wizard. So when we come down to the e-file wizard, this is the simplest wizard that we have, I mean, besides the 1094 one. So ready? Did you do the 1095 wizard? Check. Did you do the 1094 wizard? Check. Next. Common EINs, this is what I was talking about, about that whole common EIN situation. You just want to make sure that only one 1094 is going to be submitted, so you only do it on one. And then you hit next, and then you confirm that they are accurate and that you authorize their submission to the IRS. By checking this box and hitting finish, you are giving the authorization for uh, the software, AC On Demand, to generate that e-file and submit it to the IRS. So then you hit finish, and it's done. And there you go. Now you have your 1094s done, your 1095s are done, and the file for the IRS is being generated and sent over. So there you go. Um, if you have any additional questions on the e-file wizard, be sure to check out the help files, um, and most, most questions will be answered there. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.